welcome back to Winning the Game of Life. This morning I'm featuring a very special guest. This young man is known as Alex Berman. He is marketing sumo at Inspire Beats. He and his company have generated millions of dollars worth leads for like a SaaS startups or something like that. Let, let us welcome Alex and ask him what, is, what he's about. Welcome to the show, Alex. Hey, Sean. Thanks for having me on. So how about you start with your background, then we will see what is marketing sumo at Inspire Beats. Sure. Uh, so I've been at Inspire Beats for about a year and a half. We do lead generation and outbound emails for software as a service. That's what SaaS stands for, software as a service companies. Um, I've been doing marketing since college, which I graduated in about 2012. And ever since then, um, I've been you know selling and hustling. Uh, I've sold over... Uh, Two million dollars in software stuff this year for mobile apps. Um, a little bit more in lead generation, and generated over twenty million dollars in leads this year. So, Alex, would you like to explain me like why this cold calling you use, or I should say, cold emailing, is not spamming? Sure. So, spam emails. Um, the way I like to see them anyway are those emails that you get in your inbox that are like five, six paragraphs from like SEO agencies or website development firms that have like multiple sentences about things you don't care about um, and then you just want to click away versus you know what I, what I like to call a good cold email which is 40 50 percent of the text is customized to your business the pitch is something that you actually need and care about um, and it actually grabs the user uh, so the main difference is customization so you you guys like manually do that much work to customize the email like lead to lead or how that works we're yeah we're one of the only uh, outbound email firms that actually customizes the messages. Uh, almost everybody else, at least everyone I, I can find, sends templates. Um, and some send like really good templates in terms of like, you know, they'll break the ideal client profile down into like a hundred different parts or whatever, but still uh, using customized emails, you're able to get, you know, two to 3% positive conversion rate in the long run versus a 1% uh, using templates. So two to three times higher, um, which is way better. <laughs> so cold emailing is the one method you use. The, what are the other methods you, your company is using to generate the leads? Uh, so cold emailing is what we do when we contact the leads. Uh, generating the leads, we have um, a proprietary software uh, platform that we use, as well as a bunch of different databases where we can go out and find like the perfect type of leads. Um, so what we like to do is look at buying signals per company and then go after you know, specific leads in there. So every uh, time we go after leads, it's, it's fully customized. So it depends on the person. So for example, like me and my wife, we, we run like wholesale computer parts business. So, so let us analyze that in, in real time and let us see, you know, I didn't, I didn't alert you before the interview, but now let us, let us do the real, real show here so that people can see how they, how your services can help them. And at the same time, before I end the show, I will be asking you how they can implement some of these things without hiring your company. What if they're not ready or they don't have money or they don't want to invest money and they want to do some of the things themselves. So let us start. Like I have, a, I'm a wholesale computer parts business. So where, where do you start? I come to you. Sure. So the first question I ask is who are you selling to? You say you're wholesale. Who's like your ideal client? Who are you trying to target? So either we are selling to the people like who are the repair shops, like for example, Best Buy, you buy some computers and all the Best Buy may have given a contract to one company in America and Canada to do all the depot repair for them. That is one ideal client kind of. The other people are like, like all the manufacturers themselves. For example, all the Dell, Acer and all the big companies, mm -hmm. they collect a lot of money from the big corporation when they sell the computers to them. And then they, because they, they charge, they pre-collected a lot of money to provide them immediate like a repair service on the product because big companies want to make sure that all the computers are working and they're being repaired on the same day or by next day. So sometimes those companies estimate a failure rate on certain parts, but the failure rate is in reality, if sometimes higher than that, then they need to go out to the market and they have some preferred small companies like me or actually actually those companies are one level above they, they are called tier one suppliers i'm not one of them i'm tier two so so all those big companies will send an email or requirement to all those big companies about a dozen companies in america and those companies start looking in the country who have this part in stock and can ship today 
So what we do is we, we, we also do the speculation like what will be required for some of the computers which came this year. So generally the requirement is two years from today. So we start buying at liquidation price and start stocking those parts and we gamble. We see if there's a requirement then we can sell at a very high price and if there's no requirement it's close to scrap price. Right. Okay, so do the um, so the tier tier one manufacturers and then the small computer repair shops are your two main customers. Yes. Okay, so uh, these tier one shops, do they have like a preferred vendor list, or how do they normally uh, pick their vendors? Yes, because we had been in this business since 1999, so we we are well known in that industry. So so we are already on their preferred list, but I'm sure there are more than those like a dozen people we know. So we, it's, it's, it's very hard to find them and make a relationship with them. Right. Um, so one thing we could do is go after, if there were trade shows, there, there are probably trade shows for what you do, right? Yes, yeah. Um, so what we're able to do with, with the software that we created um, is take a trade show or take an email list um, and basically find everybody that's a member of it. So everyone that's bought a ticket to this trade show, for instance, would be able to add to a list and then we'll cross-reference that with you know who their company are, uh, what their company size is, and then we might even be able to find data on like average spend, um, or be able to infer based on like how you know how big they are, or what's going on. Um, so what we try to do one is find you know as many as possible, and then we'll niche it down to try to figure out the ones that would be most interested um, in in using you know your computer parts over somebody else. Well, actually, something else came to my mind. Like during that process, if I'm doing this myself, I may even be able to identify some of the brands or parts or is other equipment similar to computers i'm not even serving that market yeah you could that's a uh, yeah, side benefit i guess like like for example i don't <laughs> serve i don't supply parts and services to the people who buy and sell printers so when i'm going through this database or you are going for me or anybody else at that yeah. point you may really even be able to recommend, hey, Sean, why are not why are not tapping into this market at the same time? I got all exactly. the resources, right? Yeah, it's a nice side benefit. Actually, um, so one of our clients does social media, and every time we go and we look for people that are into social media, um, people that, that go for social media outsourcing, for instance, always usually want like blog posting or content or other stuff uh, like that, sometimes even podcast creation. So yeah, um, every vertical, there's going to be, uh, there's going to be uh, opportunity then. So yeah, that's a really good point. So what 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 else your company like? Tell me more, you know. <laughs> yeah. So what we do is we'd find you know what we try to do is find as many as possible because you said tier one manufacturers are hard to find. Okay. If we look in trade shows, you know, in scrape, that's going to be a really easy way to find the base data. Then what we try to find is buying signals, which is what are these companies doing or what would they allow to be published publicly that would make them a really good fit for you. So for you guys, maybe it's a certain number of customers. Um, for some companies, it's like a social media following. Um, or maybe if they work with a certain manufacturer, like if a tier one manufacturer is only selling the Best Buy, um, that's probably worth getting into, right? If you're trying to break into Best Buy or you know other signals like that. So I'm already established company. I have like all the data, previous experience, and I already know exactly who are my customers. But how about the startups? How 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 you help them? Yeah, so we work best when you know who your customers are. So what I like to tell startups is, um, wait till you have like three, four customers, right? Because our service is a few hundred dollars a month. It's not something unless you have you know equity, or unless you have funding raised. It's not worth you know putting money in, or you have revenue. Um, so yeah, wait till you get three, four customers, and that way you know kind of who's accepting your offers, who's buying from you, um, and then we can scale up from there. So yeah. Uh, once once you have a couple customers, you'll be able to easily identify what sort of companies are most likely to buy from you, who's the decision maker, um, and then the other factors as well. So it all kind of falls into place. Maybe you can ask them to tell the at least a dozen competitors they know. Yeah, yeah. So for example, I have other business, like I teach people how they can like get published mm -hmm. and become more credible. That way they're seen as an authority in the industry. So, so I, I'm about to launch that business. So in that, maybe you are my ideal customer. Okay, so for you, what I would do um, is go to Twitter um, and look at the ratios of follower to followee, right? There are two ways you could approach it. If you wanted people that really have influence, 
you could find people in the business sector that have, let's say, over 10,000 followers and less than 500 followers, right? That's a nice ratio. You know that people are actually engaging with their tweets. However, if you were looking for people that want to invest in social media, you might be looking for people that have, let's say, like 30,000 followers and like 25,000 people that they're following. Um, because if they're investing in a service or they're spending the time to actually follow that many people, you know they're more likely to invest in building the personal brand. And also they don't have the clout necessary to gain the 35,000 uh, 35, followers on their own. So they're going to have to use you know, tricks like what you're teaching in the book. Okay, so we are already halfway in the show. So one thing I'll be asking you, like what, what kind of prizes people have to pay you in the beginning to start? Is this a retainer service, a monthly service, or do you guarantee your services or something? Or they have to risk all the money when they're hiring you? Yeah, it's monthly. Um, so what happens is we've got two packages that we start with. One is called the scale package. It's six ninety nine a month, um, where we basically reach out to two hundred people every month. Um, you know, with all the custom filtering and all that. Um, and for that, you expect about four to six, you know, appointments or signups with your sales team. Um, and then the larger package is called Rocket. Uh, that one's seven hundred people that we're reaching out to per month, and that's seventeen ninety nine. And uh, how about like uh, in real time, can you teach them, teach to my listeners and viewers something like if they can implement some of your strategies and see, wow, this is working for them and then actually they outsource to you kind of? Sure. Yeah. So if you do the first thing like um, that we were talking about, which is, you know, how to identify buying signals, if you're going after customers that want to buy from you, um, you're, you don't really have to worry about the, the content of the cold email. They'll basically respond. Um, but if you want, I can go over uh, like the email script that we use or the email template that we use to uh, get people to respond to us. Yeah, please. Go ahead. Okay. So what we learned um, while we were sending, we sent over a million cold emails this year. And the main thing that we learned is subject line kind of matters. Uh, but preview text, the content of the message matters a lot more than the subject line. So we tried testing things like attention and important to get people to open the emails. But what we found works better when you're going for your subject line is something custom to their business and something that uses their name. So for instance, uh, when I was selling out to a Ruby on Rails uh, shop, the subject line I used was, built a tool that auto finds Ruby on Rails projects. Is that something you're interested in, Mark? You know, for you, it's, um, you know, we have, you know, what XYZ part at you know XYZ price, if it's a price sort of thing, or we have XYZ part in stock, uh, is that something you'd be interested in, Mark? That sort of thing. Something that, that they're going to be looking for that's going to get them to open the email is going to be uh, key here. Um, then you jump into the actual message itself. So like, hey, Mark. Um, and then what I like to do, or, and what we do as a team, is something very personal to their business. So for you, it would be like, hey, Mark, I was browsing your computer repair shop site. Looks like you have a wide range of product offerings. Um, really impressed with the testimonial on your site from you know Mary or whatever, like if they have customer testimonials. So call out something super specific that you wouldn't be able to send to a million other people. And that'll get them to keep reaching or keep uh, reading. Then you pitch yourself. So, you know, my name is, my name is Sean. I've been supplying uh, wholesale computer repair for the last, you know, 20 years or whatever it is. Um, recently, we just got XYZ parts in stock, and I realized there might be a shortage on them, so I wanted to, you know, pitch those over to you or show you that we have them in stock. Is that something you'd be interested in? Um, if so, I would love to hop on the phone and, and chat really quick. Thanks, Sean. Okay, it's almost like somebody listening to you today and want to be guest on my show should be writing me an email. Hey, Sean, I was listening to Alex Berman, and <laughs> it was so exciting. He had high energy, and it was very inspirational. By the way, this is what I do. Interested? Yeah, exactly, and. Since he called me out, you know, that means that he had listened to the episode, so he cares. And yes, if you call out something on their website, um, it's going to get them to pay attention. And then the last thing I do at the very end is I do a PS. Uh, so like PS, and then I call out something from their social media. So like PS, saw you're into craft beer, uh, drink any good ones recently? Or like PS, saw your dog on Instagram, uh, you know, and if I, I don't know anything about dogs, but like, is that a pug or like whatever, like you call out something that you're interested in that, and they're interested in that you find on their social media. Because you really want them to read it and take action. That's the goal. Yeah. Um, read it, take action, and then see you as a person worth uh, responding to. Um, and if you use that framework, 
what will happen and, and what's happened to me a lot is people, even if they're not interested, will respond back and be like, hey, that was an awesome email. Not interested at this time, but it sounds like a great concept. Like they'll, they'll, they'll still encourage you even if they're not um, interested, which is good if, if you're a solopreneur or a company that's jump, jumping into Outbound um, because it'll keep you going. Yeah, because your PS is touching them at emotional level and Tony Robinson says you act just, you do everything based upon your emotions. So you guys are psychologists, you know, you guys are, <laughs> you guys are, I cannot use the word torture, but I, you, I don't know what is the negative of that. Like you're inspiring people to just take action no matter what, they must reply or they must communicate. And maybe a lot of people, a lot of those cold emails may generate friendship and relationships, I think. Yeah, and they already have. Um, I'm friends with a bunch of our clients. Um, but it, it also hits another psychological principle, which is the fact that they need something like you, right? If you're doing lead generation for you, for instance, if they need these computer parts and you're providing them with the parts that they need, they want to buy from you. You're just giving them more and more reasons to do it. You guys are very smart. You're so young to be that smart. <laughs> I, I mean, tell me this, like, l let us switch this, like, a lot of listeners and viewers, they are, maybe, maybe at least half of those are in business or solopreneur or about to start business, but there, there may be some on the borderline, they have not started a business like that. Do you have any special recommendations for them, where they should start? Yeah, um, if you don't have a business and you don't really have a business idea, I would start uh, on job boards. Right. Look for companies that are hiring for some sort of thing and then start a services based company. For instance, let's say you have like a background in design. Um, you can go on AngelList and look for startups that are hiring designers. Um, and then instead of pitching, you know, like a normal job search process where you're going for full time work, uh, just pitch as a freelancer and then try to take on as many clients as possible and just grow from there. That, that's a good approach, you know, like that way you are just working with all those people you want to work and you're still working what you want to work and you are still kind of fulfilling their job without getting hired. So it's a yeah, win-win situation. You are like a, taking their workload out of their hands, but at the same time you are, you are like a, taking away their liability part from an employee. Exactly. Um, and the biggest mindset shift for me, uh, I started a content marketing firm in February of this year. That's actually how I ended up in Inspire Beats. I got aqua hired by them. Um, but the biggest mindset shift for me when I was doing content was I didn't actually write any of the content. So I hired somebody to write the content and all I focused on was selling. Um, and that, that's my biggest piece of advice for your listeners. If you're trying to get started in business, just start selling stuff. So if you, you sell the design, right, you get people really good at saying yes and giving you money, then you hire a designer that's just looking for work and then you send them all the work. Uh, that way you have the uh, ability to scale really quick. Yeah, I mean, let us say I'm, I'm looking at microphone or the camera or the TV. Like if any of this I, I can sell, I can buy from any manufacturer. I can cu get custom made, can get my branded and everything. That does not mean I had to open a factory first and then I had to see if I can sell it. So as long as you can market, once you create a system and mindset and you train yourself, you could be selling practically anything. It's just input and output. Exactly. And yeah, for yours and for most businesses, that's why I really like cold email because it's all it takes is your time. You don't have to buy Facebook ads. You don't have to really buy billboards or anything. All you have to do is send an email and see if people respond to it. So is there a special habit or some other inspirational thing you would like to share with my listeners and viewers? Uh, so consistency is pretty good here. Um, I know if you're just starting with you know cold emailing or really with any sort of marketing task, um, it's really easy like once you get a couple no's to just give up, right? Psychologically, no one likes being told no. Um, so what uh, I like to do is set tasks for the week and say like this week I'm going to send 200 emails and then uh, break it down and basically send 20 a day, 30 a day, whatever it is until I hit that number. Um, and that way, even if people are saying no or whatever, I'm forced to hit that. And by the time you send 200 emails, you know, if you're sending them right, you're going to have at least a couple yeses and that'll keep you busy and keep you motivated. Yeah. If you're getting no yeses, then you need to tweak your work. Yeah, and it's a psychological concept also. Like We're more likely to notice the no's than we are to notice the yeses. Uh, so what I like to do also is send the emails out in bulk. Um, so like write all the personalized emails and everything, but hit send, and it sends like 100 at a time. 
that way, uh, psychologically, the no's either are no responses or they get buried, and then all you start seeing are the people responding positively. Okay, Alex, I see, like, you are, you are in a hotel, because I asked you in the, before the interview, you were saying you're traveling or something. Is, 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 is your company, like, a establishing one office, that's where you're working, or you're traveling hotel to hotel, city to city, what's this about? So the office is in South uh, San Francisco, or sorry, downtown San Francisco, um, and we've got a few employees there, but most people don't work out of the office. We're a nomadic company, so we're able to basically travel as much as we want. Um, and I've been jumping around a lot for speaking and, speaking gigs and conferences and that sort of thing. So last week I had one at WeWork in Austin. Uh, next week we're going to Vegas for a company retreat, and then in January I'm going to New York for one. So I'm, I'm trying to stay pretty nomad. Also, my dream life is to live in a hotel, and I'm, I'm making it happen now. <laughs> oh, I wish you can just buy one hotel and live in one hotel. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> that could work, too. No, um, no. I, I don't know. I just I like being able to jump around, right? I think yeah, psychologically so, it convinces so, me I'm on vacation. <laughs> so your goal should not be live in a hotel. It should be live in many hotels, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Different hotels. Yeah. So, so do you have, like, most of the customer just in America or you guys are like uh, all around the world? Uh, all around the world. Recently we've been breaking into Korea, Japan. I'm supposed to actually go to Japan I think in February to do a talk and then China we've got a lot um, and then yeah everywhere basically. We've got some in India, we've got some in uh, South Africa um, and then Eastern Europe also. Our, um, our main benefit I think for these uh, you know like non-American shops especially if you're an agency um, is that we're able to send you know American cold emails Whereas, you know, normally an, an Indian or Chinese or a Eastern European development shop would be sending these spammy cold emails. So they're able to use a shop like us to get in the door um, with clients they normally wouldn't be able to get in with. You are tapping into a very big market. Yeah. I mean, China and India <laughs> hold over half of the population in the world. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, so and they were very bad at cold email in my experience. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it's, 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 it's like if you start writing emails in Chinese, you will be bad at that too. <laughs> yeah. Well, so a lot of them, I'm, I'm actually surprised, uh, especially in China, they do business in English um, a lot. And actually in India, it's, it's English too. And Korea. We've had a lot of experience doing business in English everywhere. Yeah, actually, my daughter studied uh, Mandarin. She went to Beijing for two semesters, you know. She yeah, worked, she worked for an American company, but like two days back, it, she got transferred for a couple of years project to London. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, so she she and her husband two dogs flew and just two days back. So it was big project to take two big dogs with them. Yeah, you know. So my friend, unfortunately, we are close to the we are we are very close to the end of the show. Is there? Any special web link or some information I should provide to the people or listeners and viewers? Sure. Everyone likes free stuff. Um, so we have this free email course called 10 Sales Hacks in 10 Days. Um, it's going to be a quick start if you're new to cold emailing. Uh, that is inspirebeats.com slash course.html. And then if you want us to do things for you, uh, just go over to inspirebeats.com and either send us a message or pick a package over there. Okay, can they also talk to you one on one for initial consultation or you guys don't offer anything like that? Yeah, we do. So basically what happens um, if you want to talk to me, just send an email through the contact form and message the, mention the podcast and then I'll send you over a Calendly link and yeah, you can talk to me. Okay, very good. It was very inspirational and I'm sure a lot of my listeners and viewers are going to learn something about the cold emailing, you know, not cold calling, it's just cold emailing. And I learned a lot today and I'm going to start a project myself here, just starting with the cold emailing and then hopefully I'll go to your website, download the free course, I'll go through that and if it works for me, I'm sure I'll bring some business to you. Awesome. Yeah, most industries like this, it, um, you know, a lot of people aren't doing cold emailing. So if you are doing it and you're doing it better, you're going to dominate even more. Okay. Thank you, my friend. Thank you for coming to the show. Thanks for the time and have a nice day. Thanks, Sean. Bye.
LaptopUniverse.com CEO Indu Chopra announced the launch of BuybackQueen.com. This newly launched reverse e-commerce website buys back used old electronics, old iPhones, iPads, and all other smart devices directly from the consumers. You should not throw your old phone away because your trash may be hitting gold. Buyback Queen wants your old device and will pay top dollars for it. The process is as easy as one, two, three. Fast payments, free shipping, free data wipe, risk-free transaction. Let us make the world a cleaner place and make money by selling our device on BuybackQueen.com.